here finally, finalmente. I'm so glad. Thank you, and thank you so much for your patience today. I want to welcome you to San Alejo State Beach. I'm Sandy, an interpreter with California State Parks, and you're here for your virtual Junior Ranger program called MPAs, a protected place for our friends to play. So I'm gonna get a quick hand raise from you. Have any of you ever been to San Alejo Beach or any of the beaches in uh, Northern San Diego County? Give us a hand raise if you've been here. Oh, numbers are climbing. I'm loving that. That's great. All right. Well, we're gonna be talking about this special beach right here and it is a marine protected area. And that's what an MPA is. And I think some of you may have been in some other programs this summer and you found some other MPAs to explore and we're all different. So this is a brand new Swami's MPA for us to talk about today. And we're also going to be doing a demonstration and our demonstration will demonstrate an estuary and how it is nature's natural filter for our watershed. We're going to do a water droplet activity and get busy in just a minute. You're going to meet Jarvis the jelly. So, I mean, we've got lots of stuff to do today. And then we'll head out to the beach and we'll do some exploring. So that's what we plan for today. So the first thing I wanna talk about, we our MPA, a Swami's is, well, first of all, where did that name come from? Swamis came from an enlightenment center just a few miles north of us. And in Sanskrit, Swamis means teacher. And our MPA started in 2012. And now it's been eight years. And you know what? We're looking forward to eight more years and eight more years and to see rich biodiversity. That's one of our goals for the MPA. So I want to share with you first. Let's see where we are. And guys, I'm not seeing our PowerPoint. Give me just a minute. Oh, yeah. Guys, you're going to have to hold on here just a minute. So that uh, it's not there. So we're going to have to, yeah. So Lucy's going to help me with that. Sorry, guys. There we go. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Lucy. She is our uh, other interpreter here and she helps me so much. I appreciate that. So you can see Swami's MP, uh, MPA right here and it says SMCA. That just means it's a state marine conservation area. It's a certain designation within that MPA umbrella. But I also want you to notice San Alejo Lagoon, which is right adjacent or next to Swami's. And we're gonna be looking at that later when we get down to the beach and talking about that because that uh, is an estuary and it's the final stop on our local watershed called Escondido Creek. So I'm gonna come back to you right now. Um, I wanted to do uh, something very quick and just have you think about this for a second. Why do you think it's important to protect MPAs? Or let me say it this way. If you think it's important to protect our, our coastal areas through MPAs, give me a hand raise. Do you think it's important? Oh, the hands are already raising, I love that. Thank you so much for your support. Exactly, you're right. So our coastal areas do need protection. Protection from things like over harvesting, protection from damaging types of activities and so forth. So that it's very important. So I wanna to talk to you just about all of the MPAs we have here along the coast. And let me get back to you. Right there, all right. So you're going to see, let me get back in there. So you're going to see this gorgeous outline of California. Lots of dots on there. Well, these dots mean all sorts of different types of MPAs. And so you can see us right down at the very bottom. We're in San Diego County at the very Southern end of California, almost to Mexico. And you can see all of these MPAs are working together just like our local lagoon, the estuary and us, Swamis, 
we're all working together to protect the animals and the habitats that they, they need to survive. So I have something that we're going to do, an activity, and I want you to stand up for a minute. We're going to pretend we're watershed, or excuse me, we're gonna pretend we're water droplets and we're in the watershed. So what is a watershed? A watershed is a land area and it contains water bodies like rivers, lakes, creeks, streams, and they're all flowing from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. And so we're going to pretend right now with our activity that we are a water droplet that has come down from the sky in the form of precipitation. Although it could have come from, the water could come from sprinklers as well. And this water is going to travel down and end up at the ocean. And I'm gonna turn my camera a little bit for you and back up a bit. And you can see what looks kind of like a stream running out between the two beaches there. And what that is, that is an outlet and it is flowing out of the estuary. And the estuary is that final stop. So as we're going, taking our journey down the watershed, I want you to think of yourself traveling from Lake Wolford, Lake Hodges and so forth, several miles inland and traveling down to the ocean. Just a reminder, MPAs are important because they connect, or excuse me, watersheds are important because they connect us to an ocean, no matter how far inland we live. So here we go, are you standing? I'm ready, are you? Are you ready? Okay, let's get pumped. All right, so our fingers are coming down in the form of rain, precipitation right now. The rain is slow. Get those fingers moving, all right. Now the rain's starting to come faster. Get a little jump in there, okay? Oh, I love it. Great, oh, now we've got some lightning coming. Boom, bam, boom, lightning and thunder. Here's our lightning and our thunder, good. Now we're down into the watershed. Remember, we're going to be in Escondido Creek. We're gonna be swimming our way down toward the coast, down toward San Alejo. All right, we're swimming. Let's say it just rained even harder. So we're gonna be swimming faster. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, slow down a little bit because when the rain stop and it's just a general runoff from our neighborhoods and our farmland, it's going to be more meandering or slow. I love that word meandering. All right. Now we're getting down to the estuary. And when we're in the estuary, we can kind of just float and hang out. It's more of a very soft, gentle current. And this is a great place for juvenile fish to hang out and rep and amphibians. So just move your arms a little bit. You're just gently treading water. Remember, you're that water droplet and you're hanging out in the estuary. Now you're gonna be, though the tide's going out. So we're gonna be swimming back out to the ocean now and we're at the bottom and there we are. All right, woo, good activity. So go ahead and sit down. And I'm gonna show you again, right where we would have joined the ocean right here, right at the bottom of the watershed. Now, an estuary, I want to show you what that is. So this is, let me back up just a bit. This is the watershed, and then you'll see the estuary right at the very bottom where it says San Alejo Lagoon. And that is where we have a lot of important things. It's an important habitat, but it is nature's natural filter. That's one of the, the most important things. And we're going to be doing a demonstration about how that works right now. So I'm going to move over here the table. And I think, let me, let me just drop this a little bit. Make sure you guys can see it. All right, there you go. Okay, give me a hand raise. Did you enjoy that swimming activity? I hope you did. Give me a hand raise if you did. Oh, awesome. You wait, the best is yet to come for our program today. I love it. All right, so now we're over doing our demonstration. So if you had a chance to get your materials together, this is what it would look like. And of course, it's not gonna look exactly like mine, but we have our chocolate sprinkles and your chocolate sprinkles are going to represent pet waste. And if you have colored sprinkles, it's okay too. We know what it's symbolizing. We're going to use cinnamon, and that's going to represent oil. Our hazardous waste, if you have any type of vinegar, 
Um, if, if we were saying red vinegar, but it's okay if you have white vinegar too, that's going to be our hazardous waste. And that's, uh, oh, this one more thing is our trash. And the trash is oats, any kind of oats. It could be cooked, uncooked, but not the soggy kind that you eat in the morning, the ones that are not cooked on the stove yet. So that's gonna be trash. All right, now you had your two jars and they should have some water in it. So if you don't have water, maybe go get a pitcher or a big cup or something that you can pour water into both of your jars. And we'll give you a minute to do that. And I want you to use your science minds right now. And I want you to be thinking about what you think is going to happen here. Let me tell you what these things represent. I hope everybody's back. You got water if you didn't have it yet. Well, wait a minute. But be thinking, my good scientists, be thinking about what we're going to do. We're talking about the estuary and it's a wetland area. And it's that final stop for us at Escondido Creek watershed. But there's watersheds all over the world, remember. But what we're, everything's representing something else. It's a symbol. So this is a symbol for the ocean. It's nice and clean right now. Oh, excuse me. This is a symbol of our watershed. It's nice and clean right now. Remember, we just came down uh, in rain droplets. Now, this is representing the ocean this jar, and there is our cheesecloth. And if you have a coffee filter, that's okay too. You know the one thing I think I might have forgot to tell you, we need a rubber band or at least two hands. If you have somebody near you that can hold the cheesecloth or the coffee filter, just like that, or if you have a rubber band, you can do it that way too. All right, so you ready to, you ready to go? Give me a hand raise if you're ready. And if you don't have your stuff, your materials, it's okay too. All right, oh yeah. All right, that's okay, that's good. Looks like we're getting on track here. I'm gonna move, try to move my stuff out of the way. All right, so one more time, remember, this is our watershed. This is the estuary right here. This filter is the estuary. And then this is our ocean. So we're going to talk about how we interact in our neighborhood. If we're walking down the street and somebody did not pick up the dog poo, that dog poo has bacteria in it. And unfortunately, that bacteria is not good for the watershed. Do you know human sewers all lead eventually to a watershed and that watershed leads all the way down to the ocean. Even our drinking water in some way is connected because the water we drink in our own neighborhoods, no matter how far you live from the ocean, is eventually going to end up in the watershed and most watersheds end up draining down to the ocean. So other things, hazardous waste. Did you know batteries are hazardous waste? They should be taken to a community center. You can look that up online and find out where you can recycle or take your old batteries and they will take them for you because they are considered hazardous waste. Other types of hazardous waste might be turf builder. People sprinkle these chemicals on their lawn to make them green and lush, but they have nitrates and they have other poisons chemicals in them that that drain down into the ocean or to the watershed and eventually down to the ocean could be fingernail polish remover lots of different hazardous waste that should not paint that should not go in the watershed all right so we've got oh, one more i want to do this first so take the cinnamon and if you've got a, a, want a little jar like this that has the holes in it, you can sprinkle it. And if you don't, just put a little bit in with your hand. This is going to represent oil. And the oil could come from a lot of different sources. In our neighborhoods, most likely someone might be changing their oil in their car, or they might be washing their vehicle. And there's oil and grime and suds that is going to drain off down into the gutter. And remember, the gutters and the sewers end up where? If you think they end up eventually in the watershed and then in the ocean, raise your hand. Give me a hand raise for that. Do you think that all of this stuff might be headed down the watershed to the ocean? Give me a hand raise. You're right. You're absolutely right, guys. If you're giving me a hand raise right now, you are correct. All right, so now let's talk trash. So we've got our trash here and that's going to be the oats. And if you have granola or something else, that'll work too. But this is going to represent 
trash, and it could be newspapers, magazines. You see this sometime on trash day left in the gutter and maybe it fell out or the wind blew it out. But the problem is, is if it doesn't get picked up and put back in the trash, you know where it's going to end up down in our watersheds. All right, so we're gonna add some trash. So remember, now the watershed is not so clean. So when we were swimming down the watershed, we probably weren't alone. We probably had empty plastic bottles or bottle caps and other single-use plastics. So now let's pretend that there's another storm or even just a lot of water. People were watering the farms, maybe were watering their crops. What do you think is going to happen when we take this water from the watershed that is now ha has pollution in it? What's going to happen when it gets to the ocean? And remember, we showed you right here where that outlet drains out into the sea here at Swami's. So what do you think is gonna be happening? Write that down if you have a piece of paper, share it with a friend if you have someone to talk it over. What is your guess that's going to happen when we add the watershed water into the estuary and then you know it's going to flow out to the ocean. So be thinking about what's going to happen. And that's creating a hypothesis. It's an educated guess. All right, let's see. So right away, what do you notice? Remember, scientists notice things and they record to, to uh, collect data. But you're already noticing probably that the water is not clear anymore. Did you guess right? Did you think that maybe some of it would be filtered out or did you think all of it might be filtered out? It's okay either way. Talk about that right now. If you have someone to share with, share out with your friends or family and just say, were you correct in your assumption or your hypothesis? You know, for me, I wasn't sure what would happen. And, and sometimes that's how, how you are too. And it's okay, whatever you thought is okay. But we're going to see that even though a lot of the pollution, or at least some of it, was filtered out by the estuary. This is no longer clean. Our ocean water is no longer clean. And unfortunately, our critters, like the fish and our other guys, they don't really want to swim in that. Would you want to swim in that? Right. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I wouldn't clean it up right now, although if you did your demonstration at home, it's your responsibility to get that cleaned up for mom. But we're gonna leave this now. I wanna show you some of the folks that play in our MPA. Remember we were talking about that it's a protected place for our friends to play. We're even going to sing a song about that later. All right, let's meet our first friend. If you ever saw a jelly program with us, oh, let me, oh, I got to let's see, yeah, we got him right here. So here is Jarvis. And I don't know if you remember Jarvis, but Jarvis is pretty popular. He got lots of hand raises and lots of positive emails and survey because everybody loves Jarvis. I, I'm not sure why really, but he is kind of cool. So I want you to see he's going to perform for you. You're going to, if you don't watch carefully, you're going to miss it. He's only doing it one time during the program. All right, so get ready. I don't think you're ready. Oh, that's not it. I don't think you can handle this. I don't think you can handle this. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. All right, if you like Jarvis, give us a hand raise. Oh, it's blowing up. Of course, everybody loves Jarvis. I don't know why, but guess what? He's a jelly. 
And you know, we don't usually say jellyfish anymore. Scientists are gently steering us away from calling them jellies because that's more appropriate. Uh, they're, not a, uh, they're not related to the jellies, uh, or excuse me, they're not related to fish. But guess what? This is one of our critters that loves to play in the MPA. He floats along and he's also, and he doesn't like to hear this part about it, but he's also one of the favorites of this friend. Do you recognize this friend? Raise your hand if you recognize him. And so this is our cool friend, Timmy Turtle, and he's a sea turtle. This guy is a green sea turtle, but we're gonna talk about another type of turtle in just a minute. So here's our green tea turtle. This is Timmy. Yes, he's very cool. And he's kind of more like a laid back surfer type dude. He's like, oh, hey, I love the MPA. I like to hang out here. And I love to come see these guys. They're my favorites. Oh yeah. In fact, another type of sea turtle called a leatherback sea turtle will travel from Indonesia clear across the Pacific Ocean to feast on our jellies along the coast of California. So those are two of our creatures. They receive indirect benefits because they're not always here. They're here some of the time. But this is a cool critter. This is spin. And spin is our lobster. And he is very direct benefit, or he is definitely in the direct benefit group because he's always here. He doesn't go anywhere. All right. And then we have another friend, Hermie the hermit crab. Love him. So our hermit crab, you'll notice he wears a shell. His body does not produce that. He has a shell on because he needs protection. This is his house. And so in the MPA, he's going to get a lot of good protection and his, uh, he's, he's, uh, his habitat is protected and the food that he eats is also there and it's available. So he's another critter, very cool. And finally, we have Ciara. She's more of a kind of a, I won't, don't wanna say prissy, but she's a little bit prissy. And this is Ciara and she sits on the coast of the MPA and she waits. She waits for mummy because mummy is coming to bring her some lunch and she's just, oh, she's over it. I've been waiting almost an hour. Where's my lunch, mummy? Where are you? I'm a little bit worried. And that's what she does. But you know what? We love Ciara. We love our California sea lions. And they also receive indirect benefit at Swami's MPA. Oh, makes me feel good just to hug her. Love her. All right. So you've seen some of our creatures that benefit from the MPA, some directly and some indirectly. Now I want to take you down to the ocean and I want to show you what we can see. I'm not sure what we're going to see. We'll go check out for sure though. We'll check out the outlet. Remember that end of the watershed? And then we're going to walk over. And if you can, I think you can see the, yes, you can see the lifeguard should be able to see that. We're gonna walk down this way, which is north on the beach and see what we see. If we see wildlife, we're gonna be super excited about it. And we may just see some things on the, on the sand too, and that's okay. So I'm gonna pack up a little bit so we can take off. Let me just get you. Packed up a little bit, what? Oh, you know what? I am going to do one more thing. Miss Lucy reminded me and I'm so grateful. You know, we are just like everyone else, keeping safe. And I'm hoping you should still be able to hear me. Give me a hand raise if you can hear me, guys. Okay, good. So I'm gonna be wearing my mask for the rest of the program. All right, and one other thing. Did you like to see, did you like our cre creatures? Sierra and Timmy and the sea, everybody, the sea turtle and everybody. Did you like them? Give me a hand raise. Oh, I love it that you loved it. Let's go see if we can see some actual, not that they're not really enjoyable, but they're not real. And I, they might not know that, but we're gonna go try to see some ones that are actually living and enjoying and playing at the MPA. Let me do one more adjustment. Whoops, sorry. I'll let you guys watch the ocean while I'm doing that. All right, so we're back. So 
you can see, I'm gonna give you just a little tour as we're going along here. This is our campfire area. We can't have campfires right now, but when our restrictions are over, we will. By the way, we washed our, you know what, I need to say this real quick, that we do follow safe practices here. We washed our hands at least 30 minutes before the program. We sanitize all of our programs. If we cough or sneeze, we do it into our arms, and we're gonna stay socially distanced from all people that we come in contact with today. So I'm gonna show you the beach. We're gonna get a little close, a little bit closer. Right now you can see humans playing on the beach, human animals. We see some skimboarding, and we see surfers further out in the water. We see somebody getting ready to do boogie boarding. Got lots of folks here today. So we're gonna take you over to the outlet. And this is, remember that area that we talked about that is that flow that's going to join the ocean. The lagoon or the estuary that we talked about is right on the other side of that bridge. So I want you to see what it looks like. I mentioned earlier that the tide is going out. So it was higher tide and now it's lower. So I'm gonna show you some things. Let's see what we found. So here's a little shell that we found on the ocean. And by the way, we don't collect shells at Swami's. Unfortunately, that's one of the things we can't do. But you can also see some marine worms that have left their, it's like coral almost, but they've left the outline of their body right there. And I hope you can see that. That's kind of cool. So I want to show you this. This is sea lettuce. And this is an important part of our MPA. This provides food and protection here at Swami's. Very cool. Let's see, oh, what did I find? I promise I did not plant this. Oh, I just, oh no. Are you guys still there? Whoa, I was worried. So let me show this to you. What do you think this is? Raise your hand if you think you know what this is. Oh, let me get my mask back up. If you said lobster, raise your hand if you said lobster. So speaking of spin, this spiny lobster, this would have been something called a molt, M-O-L-T. And this molt would have been like he sheds his skin, just like a snake does. They shed their skin. So there's no body inside because he moved on his merry way after he shed his skin. Every time they get a little tight, just like your shoes get tight when you're growing, their, their shell gets tight, their exoskeleton, and they shed it. And that's what's left on the beach. But we leave all of these things, all of these things called rack or seaweed, we leave them here. And it's very important because animals like our endangered snowy plover, they will use this to line their nest or their uh, scrape. Also, they use shells as well, algae and shells. And that's just one creature. So we leave it here. And I don't know if you can see up close enough, but there are some flies. These are, these are sand flies. And we also have little jumping guys that we see once in a while. And they're called sand fleas. And these are important decomposers here on the shore. So I hope you like that. Over here, I'm seeing this really cool, I'm not sure if I can separate it from the rest of the rack, but this is a boa type of kelp. Here, it's a type of kelp there. And kelp, by the way, you can kind of see how it looks kind of like a feather boa. That's it right there. Um, and you can kind of see that these algae, actually algae are not plants. 
but they do a gas exchange directly and they don't need a, a system, a circulatory system. All right, let me see if there's any critters around. We had a curlew out here earlier. Do you spot any wildlife right now? Raise your hand if you spot any wildlife, if you see anything. I'm checking right now. Oh, wait, guys. Oh, shoot. I think it lost you. Guys, did you miss me? I'm back. Sorry, when I dropped you, I guess we lost the connection. I'm sorry. Are you there? Raise your hand if you're still there. Oh, I'm so glad. Boy, you sure have been so faithful today to stay with me, even during all of these challenges from technology, but I appreciate it. All right. Well, what I was showing you, I don't know if you got to see the kelp, but I'm going to show you the kelp right here. Let me just see if I can lift this up. There it is. It does have some sand on it, but I'll try to get some of it cleared off. And you can see it right there up close. That's cool. And it, if you think about a boa, it goes around your neck kind of like a scarf. That's what this is. It's a boa. But it is a kelp, which is part of the, it's the algae. So it's not a plant. All right, now we're going to get one more chance. We're almost done, guys, but we're going to get one more chance to try to spot some wildlife. I can see some seagulls way out, and you may or may not be able to see them. I'm going to walk over this way, and oh, I see a pelican. So let me show you the pelican. He's out. I'm hoping you can see him. He's flying very low over the water. And he also receives direct benefit from our MPA. We have someone shore fishing. That is allowed at Swami's MPA. It's okay. That's one of the activities and the ways humans can play at the MPA. The pelican is looking for his next meal. And I don't know if he would consider that play, but he's sure enjoying the rich biodiversity here at Swami. Lots of fish to choose from. All right. Well, I'm not seeing too much else as far as our as far as our critters today, but that's all right. So I want to go ahead and thank you so much for being with us at the program. I hope you enjoyed being here at Swami's. You'll remember that MPAs are so important. I hope you enjoyed our activity and our demonstration, and we hope that you stay with us through August 6th for the end of our junior ranger programs. And I wanna thank you again, I'm Sandy, an interpreter with California State Parks, and I hope you'll come see us at San Alejo sometime in San Diego. All right, have a great rest of your day. Bye everybody.